Good morning, my name is Gordon Carter and welcome to the third in the series of live tuition on Instagram by the Royal Marine Band Service. Today we're going to be looking at vibrato, right from the very beginning to becoming a more accomplished user, so you become much more creative in your playing. But before we do that, let's play some blues. never done this before so a whole new learning experience for me so I'm really really pleased to be here okay so my name's Gordon Carter I've been in the Royal Marine Band Service since 1982 which was ages ago we didn't have mobile phones there was no computers uh, I had to queue up to the phone box to ring my mum when I was 16 years old just uh, just to say hi uh, so what have I done in that time well I've had an amazing career uh, I've travelled all over the globe and it's been very varied. So, um, what did I first do? So, I first started to learn uh, when I was about 11, nearly 12. So, coming to the end of year seven, as it is called now, um, I played the recorder at school. I sang in the school choir. And then, at the end of this, just before we went on summer holidays, my music teacher, a guy called Dave Miller, who was amazing, um, gave me a tenor sax to take home for the summer holidays. And my dad's best friend, a guy called Pete LG. Uh, was a great saxophone player and he took me through tuna day but one all over the summer went back to school could play the sax quite well I was in the school band and I never looked back uh, about a year maybe a year and a half after that took up the clarinet did a couple of grades and I went for my audition uh, when I was nearly 16 at the Royal Marine School of Music which was in Deal at that time uh, I had a merit on the clarinet at grade five so you know it wasn't incredibly skilled really but um, had some obviously musical aptitude which they saw and took me on and since then I haven't looked back um, what have I done uh, probably the most exciting thing trip wise I did a tour on HMS Illustrious in 1997 called Ocean Wave and we pretty much went halfway around the globe went to so many countries um, and the, the big pinnacle of that was handing over Hong Kong with the Royal Yacht Band at the at closing ceremony of Hong Kong to the Chinese. Uh, that was pretty cool, that was on the telly. Um, what else have I done? Shortly after that, maybe a year or so later, I moved back on board HMS Illustrious as the volunteer band instructor. So my job on there was to run the band. Uh, I also was the ship's postman. I used to drive the ship on the bridge, so I'm probably the finest aircraft carrier driving saxophone player in the world. It's probably an elite group of one, so it's not too, uh, too amazing. And then after that, uh, I went back to Plymouth Band. Uh, and then I moved with my family up to Portsmouth and I took the role as a saxophone instructor at the Royal Marine School of Music, which is something I enjoyed immensely. And while I was there, discovered my love for teaching, which is, um, which is really good. 
Uh, and, and that was really exciting. So when people come in for audition, you think, wow, are you going to be a part of our amazing team? So that was always quite an exciting time. Uh, after that, um, I sort of went to Iraq on Operation Telic on the hospital ship on RFA Argus. As, uh, as the band deployed there, that was a bit of an eye-opener. So we were casualty handlers on there, so we'd take people off the helicopters um, who were badly injured, we'd take them down on the aircraft lift, they'd be triaged by the doctors, and then we'd take them into the hospital facility. And then we'd work in different departments, and I, I worked in the intensive care department. So you'd spend a lot of time in intensive care, going into the operating there to take people out, and then moving people from intensive care to different parts of the hospital. So that was, that was something really different. Uh, what else have I done? Oh yeah, the other big thing I do is I'm part of the band service production team. So if any of you have ever been to the Mountbatten Festival of Music in the Royal Albert Hall, probably for almost the last 30 years, I've been sat out the front next to the front of house sound engineer, helping mix the sound uh, for the show. So what you hear out the front in the hall, I'm sort of responsible for. So uh, I've got all the scores, queuing... Um, the talented guy on the mixing desk at the present time it's a guy called Richard Sherratt many years ago it used to be a guy called Phil Wright both really exceptional people um, and yeah, my job is to say turn this on turn this off up down a bit more um, so and as you've been to one of our shows over a really complicated uh, show so it's quite a big job um, and and I love playing uh, and I do quite a bit of teaching um, and so yeah it's really great to be here today never used Instagram before so this could be quite exciting. Got lots of people signed in at DVD 538. Wow, who's that? Um, Simon uh, Whitehorn, nice to meet you, Simon. I need to call you later. Now, Purple Vizsla, whoever that is, uh, working towards your grade four. Great to be here. So, what I'll do first is let's get on and do a little bit of vibrato and just start, and then I'll start to answer a few questions if that's okay. So, what is vibrato? So, vibrato is basically lowering the pitch of the sound and then bringing it back up again. So what we do with that, we use our bottom lip and we take the pressure, we almost open our jaw to release the pressure on our lip. So we sort of open our mouth and then we close it. So as we lower the jaw and take pressure off our lip, the pitch goes down. And then when we put it back up, the pitch goes up. It's very important that when we come back up, we come back up to pitch so it sounds in tune. If we don't come up quite far enough, we'll sound flat. Or if we come up too much and over tighten, then we sound a little bit sharp, which is also not quite so great. So let's have a go at that. It, it, as a beginner, it's quite daunting to let go of this fantastic embouchure that you've spent years creating, this wonderful sound. It's all nice and tight and secure. And really, to do vibrato, we've got to let go of that. So let's do a little exercise to do that. So basically, we're going to play a note, and then we're going to open our mouth slowly until the sound drops off and it'll sound awful, but I want you to do this just because it's an exercise in letting go and taking a chance, okay? So I'm gonna play a G, I'm gonna play it straight, and I'm just gonna oh, basically open my mouth so then the sound falls off. <laughs> Obviously I'm keeping my air going until the sound falls off, so you get that uh, ah, so close open. So if you've got a saxophone or even a clarinet, this works on the same as a clarinet. So all you clarinet players out there, brilliant. Uh, just try that now. Um, give you one more time. And this is going to give, get us used to letting go of this safe embouchure, this thing that we've had forever, um, and just take a chance. Because we need to be able to take chances with our lip to do some of these creative tricks on the saxophone that I'm going to show you today. Um, so, what else can we do with our vibrato? Okay, so we can, we can adjust, the, the more we open our mouth, the lower the pitch goes. So if we just open our mouth a tiny bit, the pitch goes down a tiny bit. If we open it a long way, the pitch goes down by a long way. So we can, by the amount of pressure we take off our lip and put back on, is the amount that we vary the pitch. The other thing we can do is vary the speed by the, how fast we do it. So that way our vibrato can become much more creative. Um, and you know, lots of different players do that in different ways, have different styles, and we're gonna look at that a little bit later on. Um, let's have one more go at this. So what I want us to do is open our mouth and then close it. So, so it sounds like this. 
So, um, close, open, close. So that's our first exercise, and you might need to do that for a week or so, so you get more comfortable with that. Uh, and it is a case of letting go of this thing that you've honed forever to give yourself that great sound. But we really need to do that so we can move forward. So that's something to practice. Okay, so let's have a look. let's take a few questions. Okay, I press this comments box so we can see if anybody's put anything in there for me. No, got that wrong. Well done, Gordy. Uh, that's the one. Okay, will this work on clarinet from uh, uh, Mr. Wooler? Do you know what? Absolutely, yes. Um, I'm a clarinet player. I joined up on the clarinet and I swapped over to be a full-time saxophone player when I was 34, and definitely, it's exactly the same way. So you just open, close, open, close. It's the same sort of thing. Um, uh, yeah, and just, just, just have a go at that. Any tips on getting harmonics? That is a whole different sort of ball game. But yes, if you think of all the uh, low sort of tone roll rules that you need, you need to be very open in here. Oh, big shape in there. You don't need to tighten it on your lip. If you, if you squeeze down on the reed, the gap there will close and you won't get any air in. So you need to be, you need to sort of go in sideways so we're not bearing down on the reed. Be very open in here and the inside of our mouth changes slightly, the shape. If some of you play a, a G with your octave key off and then play a G with your octave key on, you'll notice, if you close your eyes, you'll notice the inside of your mouth changes, the, the shape of your throat, the back of your throat. Once you get up to around about a D with your palm key on the side, that sort of shape is very close to what you need to do for your, uh, to get the notes in your altissimo. But that really is a whole new different range. But if you, if, you don't, if you tighten up in here, you'll never get it. You've got to be nice and big and support the sound like you would in a low note. Right. Anya, 1973. How can you control yourself to be open, especially on higher notes? You've just got to practice. That's it. Just sing. I, I sort of make this sort of shape. So sort of going in sideways here. Single low note. So you're doing it without playing your saxophone. So you're training your body to do that sort of thing. Sometimes doing it with your eyes closed. So you get a real sense of what your body's doing. I tend to do that quite a lot. Just close my eyes so I can really concentrate on what it physically feels like. Okay. Why is it that when I do get a, a kind of... Why is it that when I do it, I get a kind of stu stuttering? Maybe it's just because you're not keeping your air supported and going through. Um... Caitlin, any tips on how to make it so you keep the tone right? Yeah, you just gotta just have control here. Control from your core, you know, support your sound from down here, blow all the way through the instrument, be nice and don't be too pressured on your lip, you know. Um, I tend to play, if the tightest pressure I could have on my lip is a level 10 and the least I could have a, is, a, is a level one, I normally play around about a four, four and a half of sort of pressure on my lip. Uh, and as I go up higher, I might go up to a five, but it sort of go in. So I'm not squeezing on the reed. So it sounds uh, supported and clear all the way through. Okay. Hello, Summer. Nice to see you. Hello from the Royal Ring School of Music SAT class. No pressure there then. Okay. Let's move on. Uh, let's go on a little bit more. Okay. Developing vibrato skills. So give you a few exercises. So that first thing we did with letting go. So uh, close, open, close, open. We're going to we're going to develop on that a little bit more. Obviously, if we were to a vibrato like this, it would sound dreadful. But that exercise we did before, we're going to use later in something else. But it just gives us a, a sense of of, uh, of of having some control of our embouchure. Now we're going to use it in smaller steps. So we're going to move our our lip quite so much. Uh, I want everybody to say after me now. Woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah. Have a go. Woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah woo wah. Brilliant. Now the next thing I want you to do, so you get a sense of what it should feel like on your lip. I'm going to use uh, my finger as if it was my mouthpiece. I'm going to put it into my mouth. I'm going to have my teeth as if it was the top of the mouthpiece on my fingernail, and uh, on my lip as if it would be my reed on the underneath of my finger. And then basically can go woo wah woo wah woo wah, and you can feel the pressure coming onto your lip and going away. So you get a sense of what that is. Let's do that. Woo wah woo wah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Not too embarrassing if you're at home, nobody can see you do that. When you do that in a class, kids, I hate it. <laughs> okay, so that's basically what we're doing. So let's have a go at that. We're going to go woo wa woo wa woo wa woo wa. Ready? We'll do it on the note on the note G. Brilliant. And then if we move our lip further, the pitch will go down further. So we open our mouth further. We don't want a big, wide, deep vibrato because it sounds a bit corny and a, uh, it's just not nice to listen to. So just move it a tiny bit. Woo ah, woo ah, woo ah, woo ah. Morning, Kev Bowen. Morning, Samantha Cridland, 205. She says, OMG, that actually works. Well, thank you. So once we get used to doing that, I'm going to give you a little exercise. You can get a metronome, you can put it on fairly slow. I haven't got one here at the moment. Because uh, um, it's on my phone, I've got it turned off. So, um, wow, 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 wow. We're going to do that to start off with. Breathing. Oh. That's really good. Now, once we've got used to that, let's do quavers. Wow, 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 wow. Ready, go. And then, once we've got the hang of that, then we can go to triplets. Wow, 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 wow. wow. Ready? Really good. And then we can move it a little bit faster and go to semi -quavers. Good morning, the captain of HMS Rally. Oh, so my big boss at work is also looking at me. No pressure there, then. Okay, so that's one way of improving our skills on the saxophone. So start off nice and slow, a really slow beat on your metronome. You can start even slower than that. And then it'll take time to build that speed up. Um, it's very important that um, we have control of our vibrato. So many times I hear players play with vibrato and they've just got the one type of vibrato. It's either on or it's off and it becomes quite repetitive uh, to listen to and, it, and it's just not creative. It doesn't bring any sort of life to your playing. Very shortly, you, you get bored of listening listening to it and, it, and it and it doesn't really do anything for you. It turns you off. So, you know, if you're playing music to somebody, you want them to really engage with what you're doing and listen to you all the time. If they sound bored when they listen to you play, then it's never a good thing. So, um, use that uh, to help develop your control of speed. Uh, and by doing that exercise, by doing it slow. Uh, with quavers and triplets and semi-quavers and then gradually increasing the tempo marking up on your metronome so you get more speed, you'll have real control of your playing. And we're going to look at a few players in a moment uh, that, that, that vibrato in different ways. But before that, let's do a few more questions. Okay, I've got a few more questions in the big questions box, so let me put this. Uh, what's your favourite MFM arrangement from my dad, Harry Norton? Um, my favourite MFM arrangement, I really loved, um, I really loved playing uh, Million Love Songs last year, which um, your dad did, was like, take that arrangement. Um, I just loved the saxophone solo that Snake Davis did on that, and it, and it was a real, real pleasure to play it last year, because um, there was a young lad who joined our, our band in Plymouth many years ago called uh, Steve Sarley, and he was a young solo cornet player. And to see him progress and become the fine player he is now, and I, I used to look after him at work, uh, and then to finally do a duet together was pretty cool. And I'll, I'll probably talk about that a little bit later on uh, about what we did in that because that that was really cool. Um, someone else has put said to me, um, "What is your favourite part of the job?" Okay, so um, my favourite part of the job. Um, it is great to play music. Uh, I've got two things. Um, the first thing I would say is the people. Um, our team is amazing. The people in our team are incredible. Uh, everybody tries their absolute best all the time. Everyone's got a great sense of humour. Everybody helps everybody. 
everybody's very supportive and um, and I think that is the best thing about being um, in, in, in the Royal Marine Band Service, the people are phenomenal. Um, the next best thing for me is uh, I'm very fortunate to play lots of solos. Playing solos isn't for everybody, not everybody enjoys it, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not um, a really good player because, you know, everybody in our outfit is a great player, uh, but lots of people just aren't comfortable being a soloist. I love it because I get to be me for a few moments um, and, and I get to play lots of slushy ballads and uh, and you get to express um, everything you've got inside you. You can't describe it to anybody. Um, you can't write it down on a piece of paper. You can't tell it to anybody. All you can do is just show it on your instrument. Uh, and I love that. I love the chance to close my eyes with my own thoughts and emotions and, and just be me and let it all out for a few moments. And um, yeah, it's really cool. Uh, that, those are probably my few favorite bits. Okay, so come do a master class at the Royal Naval Volunteer Band. Have you heard of Die Joke? Yes, I've heard of Devon Youth Jazz Orchestra. I know quite a few guys in that. Um, uh, uh, who else is uh, here? Should vibrato be slower on low notes and faster on high notes? Does softer reeds make it easier? Okay, so. Yes, I do tend to vibrato slightly slower on the low notes and up high, I tend to vibrato a little bit faster. Um, but it all, again, it all depends what sort of piece you're playing, but as a general rule of thumb, I tend, to, I tend to do that. And most people we listen to, accomplished players, will, will tend to do that. Uh, as playing on softer reeds, um, I just play on a reed that suits my, um, my mouthpiece for, for me. Um, my reed's got to be able to let me play right at the very top and right at the very bottom. Um, I play on two and a half, uh, sorry, uh, I play on threes, uh, Van Doren V16 threes on my alto, and I play on V16 two and a halves on my tenor. I've got a slightly more open lay on my tenor sax. Um, so yeah, I don't think the reed really matters. You just got to have the right reed for you and your mouthpiece, and that, that will vary from person to person. The, t the tip openings on my mouthpiece are, are, are quite wide. Um, if, you know, if you've got more of a student model, then, you know, um, you know, you might need a different strength of reed, but it's all mechanics. It doesn't, you know, just because you play on, if you play on four, level, you know, strength four or five reeds doesn't mean you, you know, you're a much better player than somebody else. It's just what works for your mouthpiece. Okay, I want to do jazz. Any pieces of advice for alto? Yeah, so if you want to, if you want to play some jazz, uh, first of all, get yourself a teacher that can unlock the door to improvising. That is really key. Um, it doesn't, you know, if you're a sax player and, and you can't find a jazz sax player, find a jazz trumpet player because he can, he can help you do that. You know, they will we'll talk music and chords and notes and you know what the notes are on your instrument and it'll be able to help you with that. Um, uh, I tend to use a set of books written by an American jazz educator called Jamie Abersoll. Um, and uh, in fact, I've got one here. Let me just grab it. Okay, it'll, it'll look back to front for you, but it's uh, how to... How to play jazz and improvise, uh, but one. So that's a good place to start. There's lots of great tips in there. There's some backing tracks to play along to. In fact, I played one of the backing tracks from that book to start off with. Um, and that's a good place to start. You know, you need to know your scales, um, but they're right all the different scales for you to learn in there. And, that, and I would say that is a good place to start. Okay, Caitlin Norman. Why does the note try to drop onto the G without the octave key when doing vibrato? On the G with the octave key. Okay, so uh, you just need to have control of your lip. Maybe this key isn't sealing quite properly, and and you see here that might be just need bending back a little bit so it closes down at the top when it's off. So you might need just to get a repair to just check that out. That's probably what's happening there. Tips on stylistic use of a vibrato speed. Yeah, let's do that. Let's move on. So the different thing, the next thing I've got written down in my sort of lesson plan, really for you guys today, is different styles. Now, different people play uh, different ways. Uh, so uh, I'm going to give you a list of names for people to check out um, uh, because they all play incredibly differently, but they all sound amazing because it suits their style of play. Okay, so uh, Ben Webster is tenor sax player, very uh, old school tenor sax player, very distinctive vibrato. Uh, another real great favourite tenor player of mine is a guy called Stanley Turntine. I love the way he plays. I really like his vibrato. Um, Stan Getz, the king of the bossa nova, you know, guy who plays 
uh, the girl from Ipanema all the time, you, you may recognise that tune. He's got a very distinctive vibrato and different from the other two guys. Um, a uh, really famous alto player called Paul Desmond, played in Dave Brubeck's quartet. Uh, he wrote a um, really famous number, Take 5. He got really, again, beautiful sound. Um, I do know that the saxophone professor at the Royal Marine School of Music, Simon Bates, that's his favourite saxophone player, and he once said to me, if he was on a desert island and he could only listen to one sax player for the rest of his life, it would be Paul Desmond. So uh, check out Paul Desmond. Uh, one of the absolute jazz giants on the saxophone, uh, another alto player, Cannonball Adley. Again, he vibratos completely differently. Um, a modern player that I really like, um, and really he, he really vibratos very much how uh, modern, player, mo modern players are now, is a guy called Dave Koz, K-O-Z. Uh, he, he's got loads of great stuff on YouTube and uh, Spotify. Uh, he's got a he's got a band called the Summer Horns with loads of different saxophone players and stuff and that's really quite cool. So check him out. He plays real nice. Um, and of course, um, you should check out Michael Brecker. Uh, Michael Brecker came along and really changed the way the saxophone was played forever. A bit like um, in music, uh, people come along like Mozart and said, "No, you should do music this way." And then Beethoven comes along and says, "No, you should do music this way." Well, um, Michael Brecker was one of those guys who came along, and Charlie Parker was before him, and John Coltrane, and Cannonball Adley, and then he came along and said, no, this is how you play a saxophone, and probably the greatest player on the sax that's uh, ever lived. And do you know what? He, do, he really doesn't use a lot of vibrato, uh, um, and again, completely different, but it's whatever suits you, so, you know, check those guys out, and do you know what? We, they all di have different depths of vibrato and different speeds. And you know you've got to find out what suits you, um, and 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 what makes your playing sound creative. Um, and we're going to look a little bit of that later. I'm going to show you what you can do in, in something a little bit later on. Okay, so let me answer a few more questions. Tammy, I've been playing for almost three years yet. I still have trouble playing low notes like below a low C. So first thing, you've got to make sure your saxophone is all sealed up and there's no leaks in it. Um, what you need to do is maybe have your lip a little bit more down the reed, very relaxed, hardly any pressure on your lip, and you've got to really support the sound from down here, from your tummy muscles. If you're not supporting your sound and trying to blow air from down there, you'll never get those notes. You can't be blowing from here, you've got to be supporting the sound from down here, and you have to be really big and open in here. A bit like a guitar, it's got a big voice box on the back, a big resonator. You need to create one of those in, inside your throat here with a ha. Oh, oh. Try and sing one of those sort of big low notes. Oh, try and make the biggest shape that you can in here. That will help you play your low notes um, on the saxophone. You've got to blow all the way through. Don't forget, you've got to fill the whole of the tube up with that. So uh, try that, see if that works for you. Um, Magsy, I have trouble too. Okay, so hopefully, Magsy, that will help you as well. Um, let me have a look at another question that's down here. Will this work on bassoon as well? <laughs> no. I don't know how to play the bassoon, and who would want to play the bassoon? It's one of those... No, that's unfair. The bassoon is a great instrument. It's just not for me. I don't want to have any bassoon questions. Thank you, Louise. I shall talk to you when I see you at work in a couple of days' time. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. How much? How much should I practice a day? Well, you should try and practice every day if you can. Um, what is important is when you practice, you practice effectively. So, um, what I try to get some of my students to do is is uh, get a sheet of paper or a whiteboard and split it down into three sections. So the last section says, um, is basically goal setting. So you put in the last section, uh, by the end of this term, I want to be able to do this. So uh, play piece A, play piece B, uh, play all my scales up to four sharps, four flats. Uh, and that's what you want to do by the end of the term. And then the box that runs down in the middle is, by the end of this week, this is what I want to be able to do. So you might say, I want to play uh, page one of piece A, page one of piece B, and I want to be able to play um, a G major, E minor, C major, A minor. 
And then the first box is the thing that you write in every day and says, today I am going to do the first two staves of piece A, the first two staves of piece B. I'm going to do C major. And, and, that's, and you know, that's all you're going to do. So everything that you learn every day takes you where you want to be at the end of the week. And everything that you look, get to at the end of the week takes you where you want to be at the end of the term. The whole point of that is you're, you're specifically focusing in on, uh, on achieving everything that you practice. You're setting yourself a minute, like, that's what I'm going to do. Because if you just get both pieces out and just rattle through them every day, you, you're not going to really practice anything. You've got to real hone, hone down and get those as perfect as you can. You know, and, and for learning scales, you know, you can learn your scales away from your instrument. You need to know the notes. You know, you know how to play a C, you know how to play a D, you know how to play an E, you know how to play an F. So, you know, when you're walking to school or sat in the train going to work or sat in the, you know, in Plymouth, we've got a ferry that goes from one side to the other. If you sat in the ferry queue, you can go C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So you learn the notes. And if you know them in your head, you can play them. So learn one scale a day. Don't try and play all of them. Just and absolutely know it. If you know it in your head, you'll know it. You can write it down on a piece of paper. It's another, it's another form of memory. So when you come to play it, you'll know it. And that's my top tip for scales anyway. Um, and so that's what I would say for practicing. And you know, 10 minutes really concentrated practice is better than half an hour just faffing around. So um, and maybe do 10 minutes really focused in the morning and 10 minutes really focused when you come back. And as you get used to that, you'll want to do more. You know, you could say, right, I'm going to, you know, practice for 15 minutes and then I'm going to listen to somebody amazing just to have a bit of a chill my brain out. Wow, that's really cool. And then, um, and then do another 10 minutes, you know. Have a go at some jazz. That's you know that's what I would do. I play alto and soprano, Maya one two three. I play alto and soprano. How do I change my embouchure between the two instruments? Um, I don't have a lot of problem going from uh, alto to soprano because I play a lot of clarinet, which is obviously a little, a little bit tight. So it's the same embouchure. It's just a bit more, just a bit more in, um, in sideways. I don't think it's. I don't bear down on the reed any more than I would do on the alto. Um, I'm probably a little bit more relaxed on the tenor, but just you just got to go in sideways, and it's just a case of just do maybe do some more practice on your soprano, so your body and your brain knows what that shape is for you, uh, uh, and you get used to going there. And it's just being familiar. Once your brain gets used to it, your body's an amazing thing. It can just do stuff. You know, it's uh, it's just got to work out how how you do it. You know, so maybe just try a little bit of that. Okay, uh, any other questions? Uh, plus about four hours on a Saturday when lockdown isn't happening at my music. I didn't get the first bit of that, so I practice about half an hour a day. And that's really good. You know, if you're doing really focused practicing, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna really improve uh, massively. That's great. And listen, listening to lots of great people is also really key. You know, and really critically listening. Why does that sound good? What are they doing there? Are they vibrato in that note? How are they doing that? Um, so maybe let's let's go off some questions now and uh, and talk about how to use uh, vibrato creatively. Okay, so we talked about uh, close, open, close, open, and then doing those little drills with the speed. <laughs> So what we're going to do now, we're going to run down a scale. We're going to pick an easy one. We're going to go G, F, E, D, C. If you're more of an advanced player, take it up a semitone. So you're running down C sharp major from, um, from the G sharp down to the C sharp. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to run down the scale. When we hit the last note, we're going to play it straight. Then we're going to increase the vibrato in speed and width and depth. We're going to play around with it and then tailor it off. I'll show you. Is doing that. It's a great way to end all your scales, you know. So you can put some music into practicing your scales. Um, another thing you can do is just practice some long tones. So 
We'll make some lovely long notes. We can increase the volume and put some vibrato in it at the same time. So we're using our embouchure and making sure we've got absolute control over our vibrato. Um, uh, let's do run down our pedro. We'll play a high V flat. You can do some of those. That helps develop your vibrato speed on control. Um, what else have I got written down here? Uh, yeah, again, I tend to vibrato a little bit faster up high and a little bit slower uh, down the bottom. When we're playing ballads and slow stuff, it, it sounds really quite um, uh, quite sexy, I think, to play uh, with a quite wide vibrato um, uh, and, and, and fairly slow, uh, uh, and that sounds quite cool. But if you do that at the top, it sounds a bit... Not, 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 it's not quite so good to listen to. Um, so let me just demo something. So um, most of you players out there, I know clarinet players and saxophone players use uh, James Ray study books. Uh, I think they're really good. Uh, in uh, what's this one called? Uh, 12 modern, modern Etudes um, for Saxophone. Uh, there's a piece in there called If Only. It used to be a grade eight study. I don't know if it still is um, on, the, on the syllabus. Um, but towards the end, they've got a little section called um, it's basically a free, a free study, sounds improvised, um, and, and the last two staves on the first page uh, mark seductively. So I'm just going to play it straight, uh, and then I'm going to uh, play it one more time with some vibrato, and I'm going to vary the speed, uh, do a few fall downs, and, and, just, and just show you the difference vibrato can make to your play. Okay, just move my stool out of the way. So that's straight. If we put some vibrato, we're not going to play around with the speed and stuff. This is what you can do. It's a completely different piece of music. So that's why vibrato is so important. In that, I varied the depth, um, I varied uh, the speed, um, and I used a couple of other tricks, which you know um, we're going to come into in a little bit. I just need to keep a check on the time. Right, so let's talk about a few do's and don'ts um, when you're vibratoing. Um, so when you're playing as a team, so if you're in a band, you're in a little saxophone section, uh, if you're all playing the same notes, or you're playing in unison, so you've all got the same pitch notes, so you've got the same, you're playing the tune at the same time, if you vibrato then, it's gonna, it's gonna sound disastrous, because you're all gonna make yourself sound out of tune. So you, if you're playing in unison, no vibrato. If you're playing in harmony as a team, then put a little vibrato on there, it's gonna really warm the sound, it's gonna sound amazing. There will be some pieces that you play where you're in harmony and you'll put some vibrato and it doesn't really work. Uh, and then, so you need to use your ears then and think, oh, is that working? No, it's not. So at that point, then if you're the lead player, so you've got the tune, then maybe the lead player can just warm it up a tiny bit where everybody else plays straight. And you know, and, and sometimes you don't know that until you get from piece to piece. So that's something you just got to always be a little bit aware of. Um, and try, if you can, sometimes match the speed up. So, if you know, so you've got the speed of the vibrato and the depth the same way. So you marry it all up. So you you come to some sort of consensus of what is going to sound good, 
uh, because not always the same speed of vibrato will sound um, good in every piece. So you've got to come to some sort of consensus and make sure you all do it the same way. Um, going back to Million Love Songs that we did at uh, the Mountbatten Festival of Music last year, you can check that out on YouTube. Uh, I was in this duet with uh, Steve Sarley on the trumpet and uh, he, had some, he was playing the tune and he was really melting it. Great vibrato. If you listen back to that, you'll see that he varies the depth and the speed of his vibrato. And, you know, I've just got the twiddly bits in between. Uh, and then every now and again, I'd have to join Steve and do a little bit of harmony to his. He's got the lead line, so he probably wasn't aware, but I was matching my vibrato to his. And if you get to, if you listen to the very end, when we come to the, play the very last note, I match my vibrato, so we're at exactly the same speed, going wow, 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 at the same time. So it sounds absolutely perfect. Um, when people listen to it, they think, oh, that sounds nice. But you know, there's a whole load of listening and skill goes into that. So those are other things that you need to be aware of. Other ways that you can use it, um, in 2000, and I think it was 16, um, I did um, She's Out of My Life in a Michael Jackson medley that uh, Trev Norton uh, arranged for Mark Bat Festive Music. Um, and this is a good tip, if, you, if you're playing a song as a solo, uh, the first thing you should do is maybe uh, definitely go and learn the words. What do they mean? What story is the person trying to tell? Because you've got to try and portray that on your, on your saxophone you know, without saying any of the lyrics, and it's quite a powerful song, you know. He's met this girl, he wants to be with her forever, and um, and he's blown it, and um, she's out of his life, and uh, and he's absolutely distraught. Uh, so I, I learned the words, uh, so I knew what they meant. I watched Michael Jackson singing it a few times when I was a young lad. Um, you know, you should check that video out on YouTube, he wears a green jumper, and, uh, and he's absolutely heartbroken when he's singing. I thought, I've got to portray that, so... Um, the very first thing I did, when I played the tune for the first time, um, I tried to play it really bare, so it sounded um, so it sounded very vulnerable, a bit like Michael Jackson did when he first started to sing, so I hardly used any vibrato. I, I did a very slight warble, like a very slow, hardly anything, which is, which is quite difficult to do. I had to really work at that, rather than play stripes, almost something, but almost nothing. So when I first started to play, it was very intimate to try and draw everybody in. And then when it comes to play the, the tune the next time round, we could develop that a little bit more. And then in the bridge section, I really went for it to try and get some pizzazz going in there. And then again, um, at the very end, um, I did a little sort of uh, flugy doo on the last note, uh, finished on a bottom C and sort of subtoned it to give that airy sort of... Um, sound where your lip comes more the tip of the reed uh, and, and, and a real wide um, sort of sound to use the vibrato there to give it that um, sort of real quiet um, uh, expression. So you should check, you can check that out as well too, see if you want, uh, see what you think. And that's just some ways of using vibrato uh, creatively. Okay, let's have... Um, Let's have a few more questions, and then I just want to go over a couple of other sexy bits. Okay. Um, how to play your low notes in pianissimo. You just got to have lots of control um, with your diaphragm um, and, and your core. You've got to really support the sound. Nice and relaxed here on your lip. Um, so hardly any pressure and just blowing all the way through the instrument, but absolute support, nice and big in here. Tips on learning scales, please. Playing for 17 years and still struggling. You've got to know them. Learn them. Learn them without the instrument. Learn one scale a day. You know, whenever you, when you walk into the bus, recite the notes. So you're doing D major, you go D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. And learn the notes. Just one scale a day. So when I'm stood on the Passing Out Parade on Rally uh, every Friday afternoon, you spend a long time just there doing nothing. So I'll uh, I'll practice some scales. I'll practice um, a, you know something really complicated like a, an altered scale in E flat, and uh, I'll, I'll I'll go through the notes in my head. And when I walk off the parade, I just play it because because uh, I've learnt it and I, and I know the notes, I know what order they're going to be in, I know what the notes are on the saxophone, and I can play it or write them out. It really works. I promise you, it really works. Uh, another question. Uh, would this work on bassoon as well? Yes, of course it will. It work for any instrument. Absolutely. Um, right. Let me scroll up a few more. 
Ella Delping, yeah, they just don't seem to stick in my head, thank you. Okay, so that will work. Uh, Ryan Latham, O2, related to the embouchure of Vib, any tips on closely controlling the tuning of extended altissimo? Um, yeah, you just gotta, you just don't be too tight, you, know, you just gotta keep it in the side and, and, and just use your support, be nice and big in here again and just blow through the instrument. You do really have to squeeze, you don't have to try really hard to play an altissimo. It's just the shape in the back of your mouth. Again, you just gotta find that different mouth shape uh, that helps you play up there. But it, again, it, it's quite relaxed. It's not a tense, it's not a tense embouchure thing. You're probably too tense. Uh, it's the order of shots, Father Christmas, Gabe, Dad, an electric blanket. I, uh, Father Charles goes down and ends battle. Yeah, absolutely. Do say whatever you want, it really works. And uh, all the flats battle ends, and down goes Chelsea's father. That's the way I. Um, uh, that's the way I remember that. Okay. Nico, play when playing notes quickly and not tongued. My sax sometimes gets hung up on notes. Is this an issue with playing or the instrument? When playing notes quickly and not tongued, my sax sometimes gets hung up on notes. Is this an issue with playing the instrument? It could be. So you might have a sticky pad. Again, um, take it to an instrument repairer, um, check it out, or just maybe just loosen your fingers off. Maybe you're just trying a little bit too hard, just make sure you're nice and relaxed. I struggle with the end. This is uh, Lisa Joan, 21. I struggle with the end of long vibrato notes. As they fade, should the vibrato get faster, finding this difficult as the notes get quieter? Again, that sounds like an air thing. You just need to just practice lots of long notes supporting your air. Okay, how are we doing for time? Okay, let's look at another couple of things. So now we've looked at changing our embouchure and letting go and tightening up and letting go. Uh, there's a couple of, uh, with using that and getting used to doing that, there's a couple of other tricks we can do. We can do some scoop ups. So when we scoop up, so we go up to a note. It's exactly the same as that uh, exercise we did at the beginning where we opened and then we close. So the scoop is like the closing bit. So we start the note with an open shape and then we tighten our lip up till we get to that uh, good embouchure for that note. So if we play, let's do um, C major arpeggio. So we're gonna do C, E, G. So I'm gonna play C, E, and then when I finger a G, I'm gonna open my mouth but blowing air through and then tighten my embouchure up. So you get the scoop up. Uh, or we could do... Uh, uh, so any 5-1, you know, A, D. So open and then close. So that's the scoop up. Um, if we're going to do a fall down, so let's go down the arpeggio, let's go from G to E, and then we're going to go to a C, we're going to finger a C, but when we finger that C, we're going to open our mouth, uh, sorry, I've got that wrong, we're going to play G uh, to E, and then we're going to open our mouth, and as the pitch drops, when we want to play the C, we're going to put our fingers down on the C, and put our embouchure back to where it should be. Play the E, we open our mouth so the pitch drops, and then as he drops down, we play the C, but bring our embouchure back up to where it should be. So that's a fall down, and if you want to run down the sax. So I'm going F, uh, A, F, D, uh, and then when I play the D, I'm running my fingers down a, a scale. Just C major. That's what I'm doing with my fingers. But what I'm doing with my, with my mouth is I am opening it wide, so we lose all that sense of pitch, so we don't really get the notes, we just get the effect, and I'm just making sure my air dies off. So more of a So you get that initial blast of air, and then as your air fades, you get that effect. 
So you don't get because that sounds a bit uncool. So opening the mouth as you uh, as you run the fingers down and and slacking your air off more of a, a bit like my wife saying while we're all isolating. Can you do some decorating again today? And I go that sort of thing. Okay, so that's the fall down. Okay, so you can put some of that into your playing with, um, uh, with, 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 you know, scooping up, falling down from notes to other notes, and, it, and that can sound really cool. Um, another thing you can do on the saxophone is the growl. Uh, that's quite an easy thing to do. There's different ways of doing it. You can sort of roll your tongue, do that sort of thing. You can buzz the side of your mouth, which I find that difficult. I, for me personally, I make um, I sort of sing or make a noise at the back of my throat, so I sort of go, uh, do that sort of noise um, while I play. So I'm just blowing air through the sax. So. so you can try that. And uh, when I did the Pink Panther uh, at the Royal Albert Hall in 2011, I used that a lot in that tune to make it sound really sultry and cool. And I did lots of fall downs and scoop ups and change my vibrato. You know, if you want to see how you can use all those things in one piece, you know, um, maybe check that out. Um, if you type into, um, I don't think we filmed it that year, but if you type into YouTube, uh, the Pink Panther Gordon Carter, you'll see a little pink box that comes up on the left hand side with some animation in it. Um, and uh, the animation, my son sort of recut that so it fitted to the arrangement that we did. So if you want to check that out and listen to uh, how that goes, so you go. You know, those sort of effects. So you can, as you get more accomplished with letting go with your embouchure, you can put those into your plane so it sounds more creative and then and then when we're doing that, your saxophone playing is going to be coming back to life. Okay, uh, let's do a few more questions. Okay. Um, we all want to know about the glissando. Is that, um, is that going up really high? Uh, that sort of thing? Is that what everybody's on about? Okay, so the super gliss. Um, Basically, uh, that's a whole sort of lesson in itself. Um, what you need to do is change the harmonic series on your view saxophone by adjusting the, the shape of your mouse so you, it plays a different harmonic series. A bit like a trumpet player changes the harmonic series to pitches different notes, you can do that on the saxophone. Uh, for me, um, I normally change on the note A, so I go A, and then instead of playing, so as I've got A down with my octave key on, Instead of playing B flat with the side key, I will play D sharp with my octave key on and go up to the next note in the harmonic series. And then run my notes at the scale uh, chromatically. And then whatever altissimo note you want to go to, you just hit it. I run up to an A there, but you could, you could hit a super D fingering and then just scoop up with your lip. Uh, but then that's, um, that's, another, that's a whole different thing. There is a good lesson on that on YouTube. If you type in digital pill, uh, super gliss, that's where I learned to do that. It's really, really good uh, instructional video. I, I seriously recommend that you should check that out. Uh, okay, I play eight minutes mostly, all at about grade four level, but I don't take music in school, so I don't have any uh, uh, NAP5 or higher or GCC qualifications. Do I need official qualifications to join the Royal Marine Band Service? Um, do you know what? Um, afterwards, after this, uh, one of our recruiters, um, Amy Phillips, is going to be on live, so she can answer th those of those questions. Um, when you come to the School of Music and audition, we're going to test you out on all sorts of stuff. So we'll give you some oral tests. So we'll play some stuff on the piano to see what your ears are like, and you sort of write the notes down. We'll give you a, a theory test, so, so elements, so like grade five theory type stuff. Um, we, you know, ask you ask a few history questions, so we get a general broad background of um, what you know. But we're going to listen to you play, and lots of people will listen to you play. So we get a good idea of, you know, have you got some style? Have you got some real music in you? Or, or you know, so um, I, I think we're more interested in in how you play, what you're like as a person, will you fit into our team? That's what I'm interested in. You know, 
can you come on board a ship and stay in a 30 man room with uh, with us guys you're going to fit in you know what's your personality like we do a lot of things in embassies around the world and um, getting good quality people to to go in there and fit in because we play in lots of real important political events around the world so you know everybody needs to be uh, quite a decent person and everybody in our team is is really nice so um we, we look for that sort of thing too so um uh, stay tuned afterwards and Amy will answer lots of those questions for you and she's the perfect person to do that because she's really clued up on, on, on what that is at the moment. Okay, so uh, what else have we got? They just need to see potential in you. That's quite right. That's right. Uh, where did you go away, Co? Because it's nice. Thank you. I got it from Joe Brown. Getting a bit stuck on grade four as my sight reading uh, needs improvement. Any tips? Yeah, you just gotta you just gotta keep going with it. Pick something simple. Maybe uh, this is what I do with my students. Um, I get them to uh, get them to look at it, try a few things out, have a go at playing it, then I'll play it back with them. Don't try and do things too difficult. You know, sight sight reading comes with practice and it comes with confidence. Um, you know, the more technical studies that you do when you come to sight read, that will give you facility of your instrument. Uh, so um, when you come to play pieces, they, they tend not to be anywhere near as difficult as uh, some of the studies that you get to do. So I, I, scales, studies, they improve facility and technique. Um, and then you know, practice lots of tunes as well. Simple tunes, try and play them the best you can play it so they sound really nice. Uh, and that is... Um, you know, that, that is a good way for improving your playing. Okay, so I've got a little test for you. Uh, I'm gonna set you some work. Um, we want you to send some uh, some videos of you playing into us with the hashtag RMBS Masterclass. So try and come up with, uh, with some of these vibrato skills. Um, on a Thursday night now, everyone's going outside and clapping uh, to support the NHS. And there's lots of pictures of kids who play painted rainbows everywhere when you go for a walk. So let's do a little bit of somewhere over the rainbow and send us your videos of you playing that to uh, hashtag RMBS Masterclass. And let's just see what you can do. <laughs> can take a little video of you doing that outside your house send that into us we'd really love to take a look at that uh, hashtag rmbs masterclass so um thank you for listening it's coming up to the time where um this is gonna cut off on me because i'm gonna do an hour uh before we go uh, let me just recap so do that lesson uh, open close ooh, ah, ooh, ah. so we get used to letting go then tiny movements woo wah woo wah woo wah Grudges build the speed up. Crotchets, quavers, triplets, semi-quavers. Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen to some great players. Ben Webster, Stan Getz, Michael Brecker, Paul Desmond. Listen to how different people use uh, vibrato. Listen to singers. Um, uh, and try that out and send us in some of your videos. Amy Phillips is going to be here immediately after me to uh, answer any questions uh, on joining the Royal Marines Band Service, so the audition process, everything. You know, if you want to join our incredible team, um, you know, she's going to answer all those uh, questions for you. You know, a life in a Royal Marines Band service is absolutely amazing. I've played solos in the Royal Albert Hall, Sydney Opera House. It's been absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, I thoroughly recommend it to everybody. I've really enjoyed um, this today. Uh, I've never used really Instagram before. I'm just an old Facebooker. Um, but this has been this has been really cool. I hope what I've showed you today is going to help you uh, improve your playing. Uh, don't forget, if you want to uh, learn about us, you can visit us at uh, www.royalnavy.mod.uk forward slash forward sorry forward slash rmbs, which is uh, the website. Or if you want to talk to us, you can email us on careers at royalmarinesbands.co.uk. Don't forget to send us in those videos if you're playing somewhere over the rainbow. Hashtag rmbs masterclass. It'd be great to see those. Um, Really enjoyed um, meeting you all. Hope you've enjoyed it. 
See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.